sin. Let's all stand. We're going to open up with hymn number 162. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Jesus, 
started singing that song, it just it just swelled up in me. I, I just love it this morning. I just want to say that. Let's do it one more time. services are this week. We'll have services again tonight at 6 o'clock and then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 7 p.m. So invite people, come out and be a part of these services. 
Uh, there will be no regular children's meetings this Wednesday night because of revival, but children are encouraged to come. I've told my Sunday school class that, and I've told a Wednesday night crowd that. They're encouraged to come, to come, hear the preaching, and everything will be good for them. So uh, that's that's this week's announcements. The only other thing we got going on this month, that's the month of September, is on the 28th, the Crafty Ladies will be getting together on uh, that Saturday. If you have any questions about that, see Miss Grace Richards. And then everything else is happening in October and November. You can check your bulletin for more dates and some other things coming up. All right, here we go. Okay, hymn number 169, Come by Fountain. Oh, 
I was about 12, 13 years old, 12 I think it was. And it snowed that morning, about a half an inch on that Sunday morning. And they called off church. And ever since then, I hate, the, I hate the, all the world to call off church no matter what happens. Because I didn't get to go. I was so disappointed. But I did get to go next week. And I went one solid year in Sunday school. It took that long for the Lord to get, in, get, to get it through my knucklehead skull that I needed to be saved. <laughs> but it's good to be saved. Aren't you glad you're saved? Amen. And one of the ways we show him that we love him is by our giving. By our giving. So let's be faithful in our giving this morning. Shall we, Brother Chris, would you give thanks? Dear Lord, we thank you to be here today, Lord. We thank you for this service. I pray you revive us, Lord. Yes, Lord, Lord. stir us up and continue. Help us revive us. Just help Give us, us that extra, Lord. That we we'll need to go out, Lord, and tell people about you, Lord. We know you died on the cross for our sins, Lord. And, and I pray you just help us. Give us everything we need to go out and do that, Lord. And I pray that this, uh, this uh, giving, this offering will go to your glory. In your name we pray, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Your heart were 
so very much it's wonderful. Well, last Sunday after church, we took all the young adults down to Stevie B's Pizza. But the problem was it was closed up. So we went to Taco Bell. And we fed about 30 people, I think it was, for about $163. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? <laughs> Today I'm going to take Michael to Moe's. I said, you want to go to Moe's? He said, oh, yeah, sure. He said, what is it? <laughs> so if you want to go to Moe's after church today just meet us over there but you're paying for your own today <laughs> we had brother Michael down to kick off camp meeting back in June and did such a good job for us that I felt that we ought to get him for revival and so I don't know what he's going to preach on this morning but I'm sure it's of the Lord so let's welcome him back to Galilee in the day Michael welcome back to the pulpit preach to us <laughs> Amen. I can honestly say I've known this guy since he was a kid. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Brother Rex has been a blessing to us for a long time. And uh, when when our family moved to Wales all those years ago, it was uh, it was it was just great to have somebody else there that was uh, around and that we felt like we could talk to and that would have the Braves games for us. I remember all them days sitting in here. We had a, getting the Braves games recorded and sent to us while we were in Wales, and we watched the World Series that way all them years ago. And uh, I still like the Braves even today. I don't root for them Orioles at all. I like the Braves. And, uh, yeah, we praise the Lord for that. And, uh, boy, just good memories with that stuff. Turn with me, if you would, in your Bible this morning to the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth, I want to just... Uh, Boy, uh, I've been praying about what the Lord would have us to preach and how he would uh, want us to bring the messages to you, uh, what you're in need of and all of those type of things. And uh, I, uh, I don't really, uh, I'm not an evangelist. Uh, I don't go uh, and preach a lot of meetings uh, throughout the year. I go to places that I've been a lot over the years and uh, I know those people and I enjoy preaching to folks. Uh, that I that I know well. Uh, I know some people like to go where uh, where they're not as well known or whatever. But I enjoy uh, ministering to people and getting to know people. And uh, to me, that makes it easier to minister to them. And uh, but this morning, I just I'm going to preach like the same way I'd preach as if I was at home. And when it's a Sunday morning at Nottingham Missionary Baptist Church. We faithfully preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we know at our church, that's going to be when the biggest crowd falls in. And there's a really good possibility that somebody has wandered into the building for whatever reason. And they just truly don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of you might be surprised this morning to find this out. But it definitely is true that there are church houses all over America this morning that are filled with lost people. Right. It's not just Christians that got up this morning uh, and did their best to clean up uh, and then made their way to church. No, it's not just Christians. It's lost folks as well. And some of them believe that they have uh, something that they call Christianity or religion or whatever it might be, but they lack a true relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. I figured that out very quickly as I started to pastor uh, and be a part of the, uh, the pastoral team at Nottingham Baptist Church. There's a lot of people that do not exemplify very many fruits of the Spirit. And Jesus said that you can know them by their fruits. Amen. You might say to me, well, it's not your job to judge me. Well, I'm just going to say Jesus told me that I could tell by their fruits. Uh, and some people ain't got no fruit. Amen. And uh, I, you do the deducting for yourself right there. Right. I don't have to say anything else. And it's not me that condemns you. Uh, it's your own heart oftentimes that speaks volumes of that. So I'm going to preach like I would at home. And I preach the gospel and, uh, and just do the best that we can. But I love the book of Ruth. 
I, I think that there's probably very few people uh, that don't enjoy the book of Ruth if you've taken the time to read it. It is a beautiful picture. It's a love story. There's so many things that are going on and are a part of it. But this morning, I just want to bring a few things to light from the book of Ruth. And I hope that it'll be a blessing to you. I'll try my best to uh, uh, inform you of the things that are important. But at the same time, you go home and read the book if you've never read it. And it'll be a blessing to your heart. And we won't try to tell the whole story this morning. But we'll get the things that we need. So if you found the book of Ruth, chapter number one, if you'll look at verses 16 with me this morning, we'll just read two verses that are very familiar. And as we read them, uh, then you'll remember some of those things that are going on. Ruth, chapter number one, verse number 16, the Bible says, and Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, I will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if it ought but death part thee and me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I know... I know that I need your help this morning. Dear Lord, I know that folks have come and they're here this morning. And they want to hear the gospel preached. They, they want to, they, they're here and, and there's a hundred reasons why they're here. But dear God, I believe with all of my heart that this book is powerful to change lives. That the gospel message still has the power to turn it around. And I don't care what lie Satan has told them. I pray this morning, dear God, that they have ears to hear. I pray that their heart would be opened up to receive the word of God that goes down in a heart and does a good work. And I pray, dear God, you remove the distractions of life uh, and the things that seem to uh, uh, just pull us away. Dear God, the birds that come and steal the seed right before we even plant it. Dear God, I pray this morning you just block them out of this place. And that the Holy Spirit would speak to a heart that needs it. And it encourage somebody in the good word of God this morning. Dear God, I know what it's done for me. And I believe it can do the same in any heart that will let it do it. So dear God, as we come to this beautiful book. This beautiful picture that you've painted for us in the Old Testament. This wonderful time, dear God, that we see your redeeming love displayed so perfectly. I pray, dear God, that that wonderful love. That purchased salvation for us. That prayed, paid the price that we could have eternal life. Uh, that paid the price so that we don't have to go to hell. Dear God, I pray that it would stir some heart this morning. Dear God, we love you. We pray you use your word in a mighty way this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. When, you, uh, when you look at the book of uh, Ruth, it's a great little book. I want you to go back uh, and I want you to notice what happens at the very beginning. I want you to, I want us to kind of, we're going to preach the whole book this morning. Are you ready for that? Amen. Are you ready for the whole thing? Uh, uh, I, uh, if you're looking for a short preacher, that's my dad. Okay. And it's not because he doesn't preach a long time. Okay. You'll pick up on that in a minute. Uh, but, uh, uh, and, uh, and sometimes I do a good job, but sometimes I don't. Here lately, I'm just going to fair warn you. It, they've been getting a little bit longer. And some of you are already, I, at least I'm up front with you, right? I'm not going to wrap up five times and all that stuff. We're just going to preach this book. But I can promise you this. If you amen and you get into it, we get there quicker. Amen? amen. All right, so there you go. So, because uh, you know what happens if you don't say amen, they don't think you got it. And they got to go back and hit it again, right? So, amen. Quick learners this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. There you go. So I want you to go back into Ruth chapter number one. And I want you to notice an important phrase that helps us set up this book in a unique way. If you'll notice that when we come to uh, Ruth chapter number one and verse number one, it says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. 
It came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. You might say to yourself, well, that just lets us know when this book happened. But not only does it let us know when this book happened, but it also lets us know the attitude and the climate and the situation of what was going on in the land of Israel when this book happened. Hey, isn't your Bible just a beautiful book? Amen. Do you ever just get amazed every once in a while when you read a, just a couple of words and you're just like, oh my goodness, that absolutely is opening up a whole new door for us. And I don't know about you, but if you ain't got excited in your Bible this week, uh, you need to read it a little bit more because I'm going right. to tell you, there's some good stuff in there. But man, I started to read it and I was studying this book and I'd been just reading it and I really wasn't studying it. I was just reading it because it's a good story. And guess what? Man, I'm really going to take a long time this morning because I'm hitting everything. It is just a, it, it's a beautiful book. But uh, so I came there and I read that and I said, Lord, isn't that amazing right there? You know, if we go back to the book of Judges, it tells us so much about this time that is absolutely so telling. In the book of Judges 17 and verse number 6, I'm pretty sure it says that in this time of the Judges, that every man did that which was right in his own eyes. You remember that? He said every man did that which was right in in his own eyes. Now I want you to think about that. And I want you to remember that as we go through this book today. And as we're reading the things that are taking place. Because I want to tell you. A lot of times once we start to get that understanding. And realize that. We start to understand what the people are doing. And how they're doing it. And things that are unusual when they do it. But the other thing that the Lord started blessing my heart with that. Is that guess what? In that time right there. Doesn't seem like it was a whole lot different from the time that I'm living in right now. Amen. Did you know, have you noticed, uh, have you taken a look around you and seen that the thing that's going today is that everybody is just seeming to do what is right in their own eyes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, they package it a little different. You need to find your truth. Uh, you need to find who you are. Uh, you need to discover the best you now. Uh, uh, you need to find out if it feels good. Do all of those things uh, are prevalent in our society and are doing away with the fact that guess what? God is still in control. I believe it in my heart, but I live in a world that doesn't believe that. Right. And Amen. here are some That's folks right. that were dealing with the same stuff that we're dealing with today. They were dealing with the same issues. That is one of the reasons that we can see here that Elimelech does what he does. He's not regarding the things that he should have been regarding. And he goes, I do not want to preach on that this morning. I want to preach on something a little bit else. But here we are with this. And I want to go right to the verses that we went to first. These are some powerful truths this morning if we'll let, us, if we'll let them speak to you and if you'll hear them. I want you to notice if I had to if I had to title this message, which I actually I did. We say that all the time as preachers. If I had to, I did. It's, it's right in the notes. I called it the sweeter he grows. Amen. The sweeter he grows. I see something beautiful about Ruth's uh, uh, changing relationship with God and with Boaz and with everything that's going on in this thing. I'm going to tell you, it's good. And if you'll let it, it'll help you this morning. I want you to notice the first one, the verses that we read. You know the story, don't you? You remember Elimelech goes down there into Moab and he has two sons and they, they, they don't, there's a famine in Israel. And like I said, I don't want to tell the whole story, but somebody did tell me, they said, you know what? I never had heard that story until you told me. And so uh, we're going to share a little bit of it. But you remember they go down there because uh, uh, there's a famine in their land. What? Just get a handheld mic? Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh, there we go. Is it on? Yeah. All right. Okay. This is weird. <laughs> okay. So, where was I? Oh, oh, I got you. I got you. That's not distracting. But anyway. All right. So he comes down there and they uh, and they have ch uh, and his sons marry girls. There we go. Now I'm getting back on track. 
And he marries Ruth, and they marry Orpah. And here they are, and those sons die, and Elimelech dies. And Naomi is left down there in Moab with, uh, with two daughter-in-laws. And the Bible says that Naomi heard that there was food, there was bread back in her land, and she decides it's time to go home. So here she is, and she decides to go home. And both daughters, you'll notice, both daughters at first say, we're going with you. And Naomi says, no, you need to go home. You need to go uh, tend to your own thing. I don't got nothing for you. And so Orpah, pretty quickly, but nonetheless, uh, however you want to view it, she decides she's going back home. But Ruth has settled something in her heart for some reason that she's not going home. Now, I'm not exactly sure, and I could be presumptuous about a lot of things here, but I'm going to tell you, when I consider the climate of Israel, and I consider the climate of Elimelech and Naomi, I am not exactly sure what is placing this in her heart and what's doing this in her heart, but she says to Naomi, I'm not leaving you. Now, I want you to notice this. When she says this in these verses, in verses number 16 and in verses number 17, she invokes a lot of things uh, uh, and a lot of things that we would hold precious even today. She says, look at this. She says, don't entreat me. Uh, don't make me leave you. I'm begging you. Don't make me leave you. She goes, where you go, I'm going to go. Where you lodge, I'm going to lodge. Yeah. Your people are going to be my people. Amen. She said, I don't really, I, I want to be with you. I'm not exactly sure, Naomi, what all is going on, but I want to be with your people. What has made you the way you are it is something to me. And then she invokes some things that I honestly don't really believe that she knew what she was invoking. She said, listen, your God will be my God. Yeah. I don't even think she knew what that meant altogether. And she said, and your Lord, uh, the, the, the Lord, he's, he needs to do this to me. He needs to kill me if I don't stay with you till I die. Now, I want to tell you, and this is interesting, when you think about what we just talked about and how we're coming to this point. Listen, Naomi, Ruth is making a commitment to God for the sake of Naomi. You see that? She's making a commitment to God for the sake of Naomi. Are you following where we're going this morning? Are you getting there? See, there's a lot of times that on our Christian journey, our first interaction with God. Now, I already told you, I, I, you know, I know that that Elimelech and I and and uh, uh, and Naomi were, were uh, Jewish people and they followed their religion. But the truth is, is they're living in a land where where they're. For one thing, everybody's doing what's right in their own eyes. We've already set that apart. And the fact that Elimelech leaves uh, gives us an idea that they're just not walking with the Lord real close. Okay? They're not. And so what Ruth is doing is all connected to Naomi and who Naomi is and what Naomi is doing. And there is a whole lot of people who all of their religion is more connected to a person on this earth than on the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. They're coming in the building because grandma was a good old saint of God. And we'll make sure we get to church on Sunday morning so that we make grandma proud. Yep. And yep. she's looking down from heaven and knows that we made it to the house of God today. And their commitment to God is completely wrapped up in a person or a thing. Maybe you came into the house of God this morning because your spouse wouldn't leave you alone and you're tired of hearing them barking and you know you'll have a better week this week if you'll just show up to church and maybe things will just go a little smoother around the house and your lunches will be better this week if you'll just go to the house of God. But I'm going to tell you right now, there is so much more that needs to be done with our commitment to God. And I'm going to tell you, I'm glad that all of you are in the house of God 
love this morning, and I'm glad that you're here. But I'm going to tell you what, when you stand before a just and a holy God, it won't be your grandma's religion that got you there. It won't be your husband's religion. It won't be how many times you sat in the pew. you got to know that man that you're talking about. You've got to know that his blood has been applied to your life. That his righteousness is on you. When God looks at you, it's not grandma's righteousness. It's not daddy's righteousness. It is Christ's righteousness Amen. on you. Amen. And these commitments, oftentimes, uh, we, we, we're looking around. And, and, and it's, don't get me wrong. I already told you, if you came this morning, I really don't care why you came. Amen. I'm just glad you're here. Amen. Amen. I'm glad we got somebody to preach to. Amen. 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 But I do care enough about you to tell you this morning that unless you know Jesus Christ, your faith is in the wrong place. Yes. Now, I will tell you this, because I like this. It's Amen. a good start, though. Can you hear me? It's a good The only problem is so many people just kind of stop there. <clears throat> but aren't you glad for a grandma that paid, prayed for you? Yeah. For a mom and a dad that carried you to church? Amen. Your whole life, right? I mean, that's what I had in my life. Or maybe you didn't have that, but aren't you glad for the person? Man, we got a, we got a little lady in our church. And, uh, oh man, she's a... Uh, she, uh, I, I think she's like 94 years old. Uh, and uh, her and her husband faithfully, faithfully at three or four different churches. He, he drove bus for all. He used to drive tractor and trailer for Oliver B. Green and set up that guy's tent all over America. And, uh, and while he was at his home church, man, he would uh, faithfully drive the bus. And I'm going to tell you what, she gets up and starts to testify. And every time she just about every time that she does. There'll be three or four, five or six, seven people after her that have to get up and testify. And they say, little uh, Brother Grant and Margaret Ball picked me up on my bus route. And they brought me to church. Uh, my family didn't know God and didn't care about God. And I'd never heard the gospel before. But thank God for Grant and Margaret Ball that brought me to church. And now I have a relationship with God. Uh, and you know what? Their commitment is not to Grant and Margaret Ball. They don't come to church because they picked them up and loved on them and cared for them. Uh, no, they picked them up and God got them a start. Uh, and I'm going to tell you this morning that God can still change life. And I'm telling you, it's thankful for folks that will do that for us. Right? Amen. Amen. It's a good start. It's a good place. But but I'm not here. I'm not here because of what my dad did. I'm not here because of what my granddad did and everybody else. There's a million preachers in the Moore family. You know that. They're all over the place. But no, I I, I know who he is. Hey, Amen. Hey. I'm not committed to my dad. I'm committed to Christ. Hey, hey. What about you? What are you committed to? Why are you even here this morning? Why'd you show up? All right, I want you to move on. Oh, we're gonna move on. This is really good. Let's go, let's move along deeper in the book. Ruth chapter, Ruth chapter number two. So you remember the story, and Ruth says, I'm not leaving. And Naomi goes, she ain't leaving. So we're going back together. You remember the story. Naomi comes home. She says, don't call me Naomi, but call me Mara. Because the Lord has dealt with me bitterly. Yeah. She's broken in her heart. There's so many things. He said, it, it, I, think, I think part of that was why Naomi just, or Ruth went with her. She said, this woman, she needs friends. She needs people. But she goes with, and notice this. This is, this is wonderful. She goes there and she, they don't have anything to eat. They don't really have anything that, that there are there are two widows, and here they are, in a, especially for Ruth in a strange land. And Naomi says, "You need to go out into the fields. And you need to go and get us grain." And 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 isn't it just like the Lord that she ends up in Boaz's field? Isn't that good? And here she goes, and she's out in Boaz's field. And uh, she's out there, and let's read. Let's read in verse number. Let's start in verse number fourteen. Uh, let's start in verse thirteen. I want to read the whole thing to you. Let's read from verse thirteen, but I can't. I know I can't. Let's read verse thirteen. 
Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me, and for, the, uh, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaiden, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. Boaz said unto her, At mealtime, Come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip the morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he, re and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed and left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. And let fall some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. So you might not know what's going on in this passage of scripture. But here she comes into Boaz's field to glean. To get the, the, the rest of the wheat and milk. And, and there was, I noticed this, you gotta, man, I gotta get all this in here. Man, we're, we're running, that clock is fast. Your clock is fast. But, uh, uh, so there was, this is so important. Remember, not everybody's doing the God thing in Israel, Right? Not everybody. Every man's doing that which is right in his own eyes. Every, nobody's looking at, nobody's caring for nothing. Nobody's doing what they should. But see, if you'll go back and if you'll look in the book of Deuteronomy, there was some provisions that would have been made for widows. Uh, and there was some lawful stuff that God was telling them to do. And Boaz was following that. And what that was is when you go out and reap your field uh, and, you're, and you're gathering those sheep. When stuff falls off, you don't go back and you pick it up. You leave that. That's for the widows. That's for those that would need it. God was making sure that everybody was getting taken care of. That everybody was getting... This was God's people's job to make sure they got what they needed. And uh, a lot of times I stop right here and preach uh, and let folks know that guess what? It's still the church's job to love on them people that are poor and are desolate and out there. It's our job. And if you don't believe it's our job, you need to read this book a whole lot more. Because that is still our job, our work, our responsibility. And guess what we've done in America? We've decided to let the government take care of it. And guess what? None of us like how that's going, do we? Guess what, church? We dropped the ball on that one. That was our responsibility. And guess what? In a time when nobody else was doing what they were supposed to be doing, Boaz was still following God's word. Yeah. He was. And here comes Ruth, and she's a benefiting, a benefactor of that blessing. And then, isn't that just like God? Boaz says, hey guys, why don't y'all drop some on purpose? Yeah. That's a pretty good verse right there, if you haven't figured that one out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why don't you, listen, you let her get as close as she wants. And don't worry about what's going on. And every once in a while, why don't you drop a handful for her? So that she can get some extra. Yeah. Remember that? You read these things when she goes home. Naomi's like, where were you at? Yeah. What has been going on? What is happening in your life? Uh, and all of this. Listen. Because one man uh, was showing some divine love to somebody who did not deserve it. And I'm going to tell you what. When you start walking with the Lord. Uh, yeah, you might start out uh, 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 for mom, for dad or whatever. But I'm going to tell you along the way. You're going to start running into the fact that there is a God who loves you. Uh, who cares for yeah. you. Uh, and even though yeah. the rest of the world might not care about you. I'm going to tell you you're going to find out that he'll do you good. He'll help you out. And every once in a while. He'll drop a blessing on you Just extra all on purpose Amen. Hey we're living Do you know that We're living in extra on purpose Amen. We got way more Than we ever need Deserve should be an asking of We are blessed beyond measure In America Sometimes I wonder if they are blessings But I'm not going to preach on that this morning And you're thankful for it <laughs> but a display of divine love towards her started to draw her in a little more. Mm -hmm. The sweeter he grows. We got to preach this one and then we'll be done. The last thing, Ruth chapter number four. Ruth chapter number four. Remember in this. Ruth comes, and uh, man, you, 
you got to go home and read this. you got to go home and read it. When Ruth comes home and Naomi sees that, and she's just like, something's going on. Something's mm -hmm. going on. She's like, that man can help us. And he, yeah, he's, a, he's a kinsman redeemer. He's close to us. He's close to us. And she says, Ruth, here's what you need to do. You need to go down there. And you read it. She pretty much goes down there and says, Boaz, why don't you marry me? <laughs> That's what she does. And I'm just going to tell you, I like it when folks are actively seeking the Savior. Amen. Amen. I like that. I like it when I run into people every once in a while. And and, and I, I, this was this was like two years ago. This fella came down the altar. And at our church, we, we have altar workers who are ready there to deal with people. And so I went down to pray with him. And I said, brother, is there something that I can help you pray for? And he said, I need to be saved. And I said, well, amen. And I got my Bible out. And I started to read from Romans. You know, I started to do all the thing. And he's like, I know how to do it. I just need to do it. <laughs> hey. And I said, well, let, well, let's get it on, right? And he prayed. God saved his soul. He was ready. He was seeking. He was looking for a savior. And Ruth comes here and she says to, she says to Boaz, Boaz, I, I need you to help me. She doesn't know anything about all this stuff. Now notice this. And you, get, you go down in there. And, uh, verse number nine of chapter number four. And Boaz said unto the elders and to all the people, ye are witnesses to this day. That I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilion's and all that was Malon's of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. Now, I want to talk about this. What this is, is this is a demonstration of redeeming love. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you have experienced redeeming love. Yeah. You look at the Savior and, you're so, and you can sing, I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of him all the day long. Sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. And there's some of you in here and you're in love with him. And man, he's the sweetest name on your lips. Uh, and you talk to him every day, and he's such a blessing to you. Why? Because you found someone that you know you can trust, and you've experienced that redeeming love, uh, and it has been demonstrated in your life, uh, and you felt that call, and you're just like, I love him. And Ruth experienced that with Boaz on a really real personal level. Now listen, this is the second part where this becomes important. We're living in a world like their world, right? Every man's doing what's right in his own eyes. The same stuff. People don't hardly come up anymore. That fellow that got saved like that, that's rare. I have to convince people half the time that they're sinners. They don't even believe that. You have to start from ground zero. Most of them don't even believe the Bible. You share the word of God with them and they're like, well, I don't believe that. I run into them people all the time. Maybe it's just because I live in Yankee land. I don't know. But maybe you do too. But I run into people all the time and they just don't believe that the Bible is even real. And so what am I going to do to convey the truth of the word of God to them? How am I going to show them that this God is real and, he's, and, he, and he has power and he changes lives? How am I going to do that? Uh, I'll tell you how I'm going to do that. A demonstration of redeeming love. Are you listening? I have to be Jesus to them. That's what Boaz was. This whole book right here is a picture of Jesus Christ. Did you know that? Our kinsman redeemer. I see it. We got to do that for other folks. Now listen, it will make the difference. I want to. I want you to get these real quick, and I will be done. It is an undeserving love. If you want to demonstrate to somebody, listen to me. If you got somebody in your family that's they're lost or whatever the case may be, there's going to be a time. Now, this is you got to be careful. You got to understand. You got to have some leading by the Holy Spirit. Because I get to do this stuff all the time, and 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 I understand we can't enable people. So don't come to me later and go you don't understand. I do understand. I've been doing. I've been doing. Uh, uh, Work with homeless people for 18, 19 years now. 
I understand the difference. But every once in a while, somebody needs to feel a Christian. Show them some undeserved love. Amen. Romans 5, 8 says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. And you can pick and you can choose and you can figure out how. But at some point, you've got to show somebody some love that is different from the rest of the world. You've got to come to them and demonstrate it to them and be clear about the purpose of it. The only reason that I have any ability to love you and show this is because of who lives in me. This is Christ working in me to show that. And in a world that so desperately is so far away from Christ uh, and seems to want nothing to do with it, I believe in my heart because I've experienced it that people will respond to this love. It's undeserving. It's sacrificial love. Yeah. Christ died for us. That is the sacrifice, and it needs to be demonstrated. When Boaz went to, uh, to do this, he had to buy some stuff to redeem Ruth. It was not free. Are you listening? Following Christ is not free. Okay? Amen. It is going to cost you some stuff. Amen. But we sang that song, For thee, all the follies of sin I resign. I give up all that stuff. It don't matter anymore. Yeah, cool. now look at this though. When you care for somebody and you love somebody to the point that it costs you something, something starts to click in people's brain. You can love on people all day long and if, it, if it's no inconvenience, if it's not a bother, if it's not a thing. You know what that's called? A favor. That's what that's called. We're talking about loving people sacrificially. And if you do something for people that is, that is hard for you, that is difficult, that means something to people, they do not forget that. It is absolutely amazing. And this is the last, I just want you to get this one. It's a restoring love. Amen. Ruth, Naomi were brought back into the household of faith, the family of God. They were restored to the place. Boy, Ruth was restored in an amazing way. Now listen to me. You gotta love some people for a long time before they get restored. Can you be in it for the long run? Have you ever felt like maybe somebody was just testing you? <laughs> I've had some of them people. And you ain't ever met them, you're lying. We have a saying in Nottingham, I don't know if it takes all kinds, but we sure got them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Some folks just test your patience. They just push your button. You're trying to love them, trying to be <laughs> godlike to them. And they do goofy stuff. But we're trying to restore people. Yeah. yeah. And it takes patience. Aren't you glad that God's patient with you? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Has he ever been long-suffering to you? Yes. Have you ever messed up and done something stupid? Have you ever decided just for, sometimes folks just for years, just they don't hardly do nothing with God. They just, every once in a while, show up at church or do whatever. Yeah. You never talk to her or nothing. And God is still there when you come back with open arms, waiting to love on you and bless you because he's long-suffering and he's seeking to restore people. He wants to see something all the way to the end. And I'm going to tell you, folks, there's folks out there and they don't believe that you'll go all the way for them. They don't believe that you'll see them through to the end. And yeah, they test you and yeah, they push those buttons, but they need to see some redeeming love that is willing and and ready to see them all the way through. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Somebody that will care for them yeah. to the very end. It makes a difference. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. They're going to come and prepare a hymn of invitation. I want you to listen. You know it this morning. You know I preached to the sinner. And I preached to the saint this morning. If you're here Christian. 
Maybe your dedication. Maybe your, maybe your love. Maybe you're just sitting in here and you were wondering this morning, how, how are we going to love people in a world like this? That's how right there. How are we going to win people to Jesus in a world like that? Right there. Amen. And you know what? Isn't it, isn't it so simple at the beginning? Be like Jesus. Right? I mean, I know it is, but let's just face it. We struggle with it, don't we? Maybe there's somebody in your life. You're trying to love them. You're trying to restore them. You're trying to get them back. Maybe there's something you need. Maybe there's something you care about. Hey, just show that love. God can be so real to them. But then maybe you're here this morning. And you just you say, I don't really know him. I just don't know Jesus. I see people who I think know Jesus. I see people that I think have a relationship. I don't know them. Well, I'm going to tell you, you can start today. You can come and you can start a relationship with Jesus Christ today. Your life can have a whole new beginning. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, help us this morning. Our invitation. God, you know what folks stand in need of better than I do. We've preached your word. We preach right out of it. Dear God, let it do what it does in the hearts of people. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Stand, please. While we sing just as I am, God dealt me a heart today. You need to come and trust Christ as your Savior. Then please don't delay. How were you delay? The easier it'll be for you to walk out those doors. Promise one more day. One more time. Move now while we sing. Just as I am.
The day I got saved, God overwhelmed me. Amen. Yeah. He just overwhelmed me. I didn't know what was happening. I was, my thoughts were in such a state that suddenly I just felt overwhelmed. Crying, bursting into tears. Didn't even know what was wrong with me. Till somebody came and got me. Didn't even realize I was crying. I was like I was in another world. I mean, I was overwhelmed. And they came to me and took me to an altar and they said, have you ever been saved? I said, no. They said, do you want to be saved? I said, yes. Yeah. They said, well, ask the Lord, call on the Lord to save you. So that's what I did. I was overwhelmed. If you're waiting for God to overwhelm you, it may not happen. I was a not so intellectual, emotional kid. And that's why God had to overwhelm me. You might be an intellectual. You might be somebody who reasons everything out, sorts everything out in their brain. You may be waiting on some particular issue or thought in your brain to click before you trust Christ. I don't know what you're waiting on. Would you say yes today? Would you do that, please? Just say yes today. Little Luke, you all back there, buddy? Amen. All right, David, you want to take him next door? Charlie, to show you where to go. Get him ready to be baptized. I'm on to I'm not going to hold you down for just one second. I'm not going to overdo it today. <laughs> he's a... He's a precious child. And David and Robin bring those boys up in church. It's a wonderful thing. Amen. And we've nominated David to be a deacon. I believe he's earned that spot. I'm very, very proud. Watch this family grow up. Amen. Amen. I think it was Luke. He was in the hospital. Down at the children's hospital years ago. I can't remember now what was wrong with him. But that was, I remember, I remember going down there and praying with David and Robin and Luke. It was a pretty serious thing. But isn't God good? Amen. 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 Well, sing something, Bill, while I go next door and uh, don't sing Gabby at the river. <laughs> <laughs> we already picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, do this thing, shall we gather at the baptistry? <laughs> Just to see you next door in a minute. Oh, yeah.